Hi all and welcome to my channel. I wonder what we're making today. Stay tuned. For this project I've used King Cole Big Value Yarn in a blue colour and the colour code is Sky135. Signet Aran and the colour is Latte and some navy blue aran from my stash and some just plain white aran from my stash and you'll need a small amount of black for some accent detail you're also going to need some stuffing material two 15 millimeter safety eyes or you can embroider them on later if you prefer four eight millimeter safety eyes with the appropriate backing unless you're going to embroider eyes on later on and an optional two buttons you're also going to need a darning needle or a tapestry needle and a scissors I'll now run you through the parts that you need to knit up for this project. On a 46 or 48 machine you need to knit 60 rounds. Again on a 46 or 48 machine 40 rounds and I've put an accent cutter in between rows 24 and 25. 25 rows for this piece again on the 46 or 48 pin machine. And on the 22 pin machine 40 rounds in the matching colour for the body. Okay and again on the 22 pin machine 10 rounds and do two of those and now on to assembling this cute little project to assemble the cup part of the project just stretch our work out as we would normally and basically make a beanie so one end inside the other well we'll check inside to see how that's looking that's looking neat and tidy as well because sometimes it does go a little bit funny on the inside I'm going to trim my tails to about eight inches or so because we don't need all that and I keep my tails just in case I need a length of a color for something or other stretch our work and I tie my tails together then and for this particular project you don't really need to hide your tails I like to put a double knot on the end there wrap it around twice you can turn your work inside out like I do because the tails are going to be hidden inside it's not a beanie as such so we don't need to hide it inside the layers but I'll trim that off anyway and there's our part done moving on to the next one Moving on to the latte or the tea or whatever beverage you're making for your project, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to gather both ends together. I'm going to push my tail to the other side this time because I'm going to be making this into a circle. So I'll gather it from that side. Same thing, I'm going to find my tail and gather the outside one as well, like that. Again, being neat and tidy with our gathers. Stretching the gathers out and making this into a disc shape. Again, we're not gonna need all these tails, so I'm going to take it to about six or seven inches or so and then keep my tails for something else. Stitching on later, maybe, who knows. So making sure that our sides are even and gathered and we'll close those holes up with a few knots now. Making sure not to, not to break our yarn and that's looking neat and tidy there. So choose which side you're going to use to be the top and you can Leave the tails the other end. It's not really important with those. We're just going to chop them off because they're not going to be seen. It's not a beanie, so we don't need to really feed them in. Just need to even out our, our gathers on the top there. And that's that part done, ready to go on the top of our project. To make the saucer part exactly the same way as making this part here, we're going to gather one end and the other end. And don't forget before we do that that we have to fasten our tails inside. If you opted to do the accent colour like I have here. Don't forget to tighten your tails off nice and tight and secure so you don't get any unravels. So I just do two knots and that's kind of uh, sufficient for me. 
So before we gather in, make sure we've done that, or it'll all come apart and that won't be good. So exactly the same as making the coffee or tea topping. Gather both ends in. I'm going to push my yarn through there so they meet up. I don't have to put it on a darning needle. There we go. And then we're going to gather the other end up as well. And we're going to make another circle. out all those little gathers there like that. You can see now why I've done the accent there is because a lot of saucers come with an accent ring colour like that and that was the uh, the idea behind that. So hide your tails inside your work now and we'll move on to preparing the handle and the mallows. Next we're going to prepare the handle and this is the piece we've knitted on the 22 so we're going to gather one end up and gather the other end up so we get a long, long tube like that. And take your darning needle, put one end on a darning needle, one tail on a darning needle, and secure that one closed. Just with a few little stitches in there like that, just to secure it. And then you can hide that tail inside because we're not going to need that one. So that's all I'm going to do for now. Pop that tail in there like that. And we're going to use the other tail to stitch up our work. So we're going to pop the other tail now on a darning needle. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold our work lengthways like that. Okay? So fold it in half, like that. And then with the darning needle, we're just going to mattress stitch up. So I'm going to pull that tight there to make sure it's properly cinched. I'll put a little uh, stitch in there to secure my tail to start off. And then we're going to mattress stitch, so we need to line up our two lines of stitches there. You can see my line of stitches there and there and I'm going to stick to that line all the way up and I grab two bars at a time but if you're a person that likes to only take one bar as your mattress stitching then carry on and do that. So mattress stitch all the way up to the top and secure your tail at the end. And this will form our handle piece then. So I'll finish doing that now and I'll meet you at the end. Once you've finished then, put a few knots in the end like that and you can leave the tail because we'll use that for stitching on in a moment. And what we're going to do is where your seam is there, we're going to push it down like that so that the seam is on the inside. I don't profess to be the best at mattress stitch, I really don't. So in order to uh, hide my fur paws, we'll stick them on the inside, but if you're excellent at um, match stitch you may not need to do that but I like to put the seam on the inside anyway. So that's the handle prepared now. So we'll move on to do the mallows and I love the mallows they're ever so cute. So let's go and do the mallows. Now I've done one little mallow already isn't he cute? So I'll show you how to do the other one. So we are going to gather in one end same as we did with the other pieces and gather in the other end. So we end up with a little tube. Like that. And we're 
going to put one end on a darning needle and just put a few knots in it just to secure it at the top like that exactly the same as we did the handle really and then we're going to hide that tail because we don't need that one for now anyway so I'm just going to pop that in there like that cut that off keep my tail for something or other at a later date and there's our little mallow casing with one tail on the other side. Now the next thing we're going to do is to add the eyes, like we did on that little piece there. Okay, so we can add the eyes on there first before we go any further. So trying to match the previous one. So we've got twins, but it doesn't matter. If you want to make them completely different, go for that. So I'm going to pop them about one, two, three, four, five, about five rows down. But again, artistic license. And I'm kind of doing them opposite where that's going to get together there like that. And how many rows apart? We did one, two, two, maybe three. So we're going to do one, two, and on the third row across, we're going to pop the other eye in like that. So that's where we are at the moment with the eyes. Okay, so we put the safety backs on now. And if you want to embroider your eyes on later or use felt stick on eyes, of course you can do that as well. There we are, put the safeties on. On the back end there like that. And pop them on until they're right tight in the back there like that. And we'll add the mouth on later. So what we're going to do now is add a little tiny little bit of stuffing in there to puff out our little mallow and it's an eyeball thing for that I'm afraid you're going to have to um, do it by eye but I've made my little mallows quite plump and round so then with the tail on a darning needle we're just going to mattress stitch up the other side Put a couple of little knots in there to secure that end. And then mattress stitch up. Same as we did with the handle. Just grab two bars and two bars, trying to stick to the, the same line all the way up for neatness sake. in and then we'll tie a few knots and stitches at the top to secure for our mallow and we'll need to squidge him into shape a little bit to make him as mallow shaped as we possibly can pulling that mattress stitch up and a few stitches in the top And I'm happy with that. And there's our little mallow. Now, if I'd put the eyes further down, I wouldn't have had to worry to move the tail down to the end. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push my needle down to the bottom and use that tail then to secure it later. So I have my tail on the bottom the same as that one there. Okay? And that'll aid us in attaching it to the top of our lovely cappuccino or hot cup of tea whatever colour you decide to go for for the top will designate what beverage you've made of course so I've added a little bit of black onto my darning needle and now we're going to add the little mouth and then you can see his little smile there so cute so I'm going to come in from the side and I'm eyeballing it so we're just below the eye there like that okay we're going to leave a tail on the one end there okay and then we're going to come down into the middle slightly and slightly lower and then hopefully we'll come out and we'll get a, a nice cute looking little mouth and not something too skewy. So that's one side of his smile and then back in there like that and 
out through the entrance point. Try not to gather up that. And we'll end up with a cute, cute little smile like that. So we need to tie off on the side to secure that little smile in place. And we'll put the tails inside then and hide those and you won't see those. So in through the same hole with that tail. And bring it out somewhere else. Actually, we'll bring it out down the bottom because then if there is any little bit of colour seen, it's going to be at the bottom and that'll be against the bottom of our join. And the same with this one. Tail on through the same hole and out through the bottom and then we can trim that off. There we go. Just push that up like that and you can't see it at, at all. Isn't that great? So we'll trim these off now. Get rid of those. Trim them a little bit shorter if you want to and then hide them inside. But it's not going to matter too much because they're going to be sitting on the top anyway. So we're not going to see it. And there's our other little marrow. Arrange his little mouth. So it's all cute and cuddly. And there's our two little mallows, twin mallows. So I think it's on to assembly now and make the whole thing come alive. Now with our safety eyes at the ready, we are going to attach them at this point in time. So I've got my ruler here and I'm going to work in inches. So I'm going to look at putting mine probably about an inch and a half down. So I'm going to pop one in. It doesn't matter where at this point you put the first one, but that will guide you as to where you're going to put the second one. So we are about... Uh, it's two inches to the bottom of the eye. So from the top to the bottom of the eye, two inches. So there's my two inch mark there. And from centre eye to centre eye, we are going to do three inches or so. So there's my three inch mark there. I'm going to pop it in there and I'll double check my measurements. So we are two inches to the bottom of the eye or thereabouts. That one is more two inches than that one. That one could come up a little tiny, tiny little bit. There we go. And from centre eye to centre eye is approximately three inches. Okay. So three inches from centre eye to centre eye. I put my holders on the back to hold those eyes in place. And hopefully that we've got them nice and straight. So there's our eyes fastened in place there like that. Job done. Now with our eyes in place, that's going to tell us where the side of our teacup is. Okay, so I'm going to grab a pin and I'm going to put a pin in the side there which is going to tell me where the side of my teacup is because that's going to designate where our handle goes. So here's our handle that we've already made on the 22 pin machine. So I've got my two buttons here, okay, and this is an optional um, extra for you. You don't have to use the buttons, I just thought it might have been kind of cute. And I'm going to use one of the blue tails that I cut off when we were assembling the cup shape, and I'm going to add that onto my darning needle now. Okay. and I've got a smaller darning needle and to check before we thread and go to that kind of trouble make sure that it goes through your buttonhole pop the yarn tail on that I cut off when we were assembling the cup shape now to assemble the handle we're going to do it as best we can to to look like a proper handle okay so I'm going to 
get the side of my cup and I'm going to pop it that way like that because I want it to come up and around to look like a cup handle like that. That's the plan. So I'm going to centre it there like that and I'm going to sew a button on there. Now you don't have to. It's going to be an optional extra. It'll be just a little bit of detail. You can mattress stitch then any gaps that you might have. Now it's good to do this beforehand. So making sure that it's straight and with the seam pointing upwards at this point because the seam is going to go that way and that's how we'll hide the seam. I'm just going to put a few stitches in. I'm going to leave a tail because I'm going to knot that in on the inside afterwards. And I'm just going to stitch, keeping it straight. Stitch my handle into place. If I'm not happy then that there's some little gaps, I can do some mattress stitch afterwards. But I love the idea of the little button. It just adds a little bit of extra bling. But you don't have to use it. Of course, you can just mattress stitch your handle into place. And it'll look just as nice. So I'm going to tie that off there now. I'm not going to worry about the tails either because they're going to be hidden inside there. But we can trim them, but I'm not going to be too fussy with my tails. Trim those off. And that's great. Okay, so that's that part of the handle done. And as you can see, there is a gap there. Okay, so what we'll do later, once we've fastened it into place at the bottom, we can mattress stitch along there and make that look neat and tidy and quite secure. So I'm going to grab the other button now and I'm going to go down. I'll take that out now. I don't need that pin. I can follow my line all the way down. And we're going to attach it towards the bottom because our cup's going to sit there. So maybe place your cup on the table like that, which will be like that for you. And make sure that you're not going too low down. You don't want it to go under there because that's where it's going to be sitting on the saucer. So we want to kind of work out, looking at the side there, where our bottom of our cup is going to be. And if I grab a pin, and I can mark the bottom of my cup is roughly going to be there. So I don't want to put my handle any lower than that. I've got my tail that I left on from last time. So I'm going to use that, put that on that little darning needle that's thin enough to go through the, the button and I'm going to attach it in line like that. I'm going to come up through the bottom like that and then line it up so when you look at it it's straight, it's not twisted like that. You don't want it twisted and off to the centre, you want it absolutely parallel with the other piece and no lower than your needle mark where the base is and then we're going to grab that button push it through little tinker line it back up again make sure we get it square there we go and we'll go through all the layers then Touching that in, in through the back, back through the front, just a couple of times because we'll be mattress stitching this handle in as well later. But this is purely to give it position, and two stitches will be more than an adequate, more than adequate. So I'm going to tie that off with a knot now because I don't have a tail to tie it to. So a little knot will secure that in place. We'll trim that off. And there's the handle in place for now. And as you can see, it holds its shape quite nicely on there like that. Okay, so in order to finish this off, take my pin out now, we don't need that. We need to mattress stitch along the bottom, just around the curve, a little bit there like that. So I'm gonna grab my other needle now my slightly bigger one, which won't go through the uh, 
the button at all. And I'm going to come in from behind, so I'm going to pop a knot on the end of my yarn like that. And I'm going to match a stitch along the top just to seal that off and around the C shape at the bottom there, or the U shape, to make that look a little neater. So I'm going to come in from behind like that. The knot will stop it coming through. And then I'm just going to match a stitch up the side and around a little bit just to make sure that it's totally, totally attached to the body. And like I say, don't have to use the button, you can just match or stitch it by all means. And now we're going to pop across the top. And a little bit down the side. Working against myself a little bit here, but it'll be fine. I've not tried this with um, hot glue, but by all means, if you want to try hot glue, that's entirely up to you. I'm not um, a massive fan of hot glue myself, maybe it's because I'm not very skilled with it. So I'm just going to tie that off and do the same then down the bottom and this will look a lot more substantial once we get that centre part stuffed up. I'm going to put a longer piece now on my darning needle to do the bottom, one of the offcuts again from earlier. They're always always handy aren't they to keep. And again I'm going to pop a knot on the end because I'm coming in from the back which isn't going to be seen so we can use a knot. I just wrap it round, wiggle it, so we get a bit of a knot. And um, we're going to do, do the same thing, come in from the side, like that, and then match a stitch around the side, like that, around the C shape. And you can go through both layers here if you can give you a really nice strong fixing then because we've not stuffed the piece yet. Just around the bottom, tying that in, make it nice and secure. That's looking rather cute isn't it? There we are, around the side. Just around to the top of the button is, is more than adequate there really. Stitch around to there, so I'll put another stitch or two in and I'll call that done. That's great, I'm going to take my needle to the inside and tie off with a knot inside there like that. All these knots and ends don't matter, we are not going to see them. They're going to be stuffed inside and hidden away. off our tail and just leave it loose it's fine. So there's our cup done with our handle on the side and it's quite robust quite nicely sewn on there okay and that's fine and dandy so we need to add a little bit of stuffing in the center there now. So I've got my stuffing complete with all bits of yarn ends and stuff which are always handy to pop in with your stuff in and fill it out a bit so you don't waste an absolute inch of yarn it gets used for something so we're going to pop it in our cup like that push the stuff into the outside so you know you get a nice even fill in all the way around the edge I'm going to tear my stuffing up a little bit to make it a bit finer because this seems to be a little bit of a tougher stuffing than I normally use I'm sure it'll be fine little bits of tufty stuff in there and we're going to fluff it and puff it 
Don't overstuff this one because we have to put our coffee on the top. So we can leave a little bit of room. We're going to shape it anyway as we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our coffee circle and we're going to pop it on the top like that, you see? And that fits really nicely there. And what we're going to do now is put some beige yarn, or you could use blue, or whatever colour you've decided to use for your coffee cup. And we're going to mattress stitch all around the edge, sealing that in place. So I put a length of blue on my darning needle. And we're going to start a mattress stitch around. So I'm going to start at the handle end. And I'm going to grab two stitches there. And I'm going to put a little knot in there. Do you secure it whichever way suits you best? It's just my way of doing it. And I'm going to flop that tail in there like that. And then I'm going to grab my coffee top and I'm going to grab two stitches there. Okay, so two stitches does two stitches as much as we possibly can all the way around. And I've allowed for a little bit of stretch so we can get a nice fit on here. We don't want our coffee being too big or too small. So you may need to do a little bit of stretching to get it to fit just right. So I'm going to carry on now and mattress stitch all around between the coffee or the tea. If you go for a different colour, of course, if you change the colour on the top, you could get all sorts of beverages in here. Hot chocolate. So you could go for a nice dark brown. That would be really nice. So let me know what colour combinations you come up with. What colour cup? What colour beverage? I look forward to seeing your versions of this. Is ever ever so cute. So as you go, keep pushing and pulling those stitches, pulling them in together, then so you get a nice, nice join. Not too tight, you want the cup to keep its angular shape, you don't want it to go inwards, you don't want that. You want to try and keep it square and cup shape, in which case you may need to stretch your topping a little bit. So I'm going to carry on around now, mattress stitch in between the top of the cup and the beverage layer. When you get to the stage where you've got a couple of inches left there, you can check the level of your stuffing and decide whether you want to add more or less stuffing at that point. And then if you're happy with your stuffing level, just carry on and seal up your join all the way to where you started from. There we are, back at the beginning. Just double check that I've got all my stitches. I'll put another little one in there like that. Just to make sure we've caught everything. I'm happy with that. That's looking rather nice. I'm just going to tie off now. 
and hide my tail inside. A little knot there. Punch it through and bring it through somewhere else and we can trim that tail off then. And there's our coffee cup. So plump him up a little bit to make him how you want him to look. And there's our little coffee cup. Done! Yay! What we're going to do now is attach the mallows and do the face and we're nearly done. So here are our mallows that we made earlier and we have the tail left on them. So we're going to pop the tail onto a darning needle. Now I'm going to pop my mallows either side of centre like that. Okay, so my little smiley mallows are going there, but you pop them wherever you want to pop them. So I'm going to put him there like that, and I'm just going to add him on with a few stitches in between the top of the beverage colour and the body. Again, a little bit of mattress stitch all the way around in a circle, like that. In between the bottom of the body. I prefer stitching things on. I know a lot of people do use um, hot glue and that's fine if you're happy to use hot glue and confident to do that that's entirely up to you but I'm going to stitch mine on make sure he's sitting in the right direction I want him to I like to dig my needle down into the stuffing a little bit to get a really good fixing so I go down like that and then up a little bit and then that little mallow isn't going anywhere and there he is sitting there nicely so I've got another couple of little stitches there just to make sure he's all cutched into his frothy coffee and we'll do the same with the other one then All the way around. Maybe a little bit of overkill at me going around there twice. But that's I'm happy with that. So you do a little knot now in the back there. And we'll hide the tail inside and we'll attach the other mallow. So I'm gonna pop that tail in there, pull that through. And there's our one little mallow attached to the top. So let's attach the other one now. So again we've got the tail that we left on when we prepared them earlier. So popping that on a darning needle. And position your mallow where you want him. Whether you want him to be close birdies. Do they, are they close birdies? Is one off at, a, at an angle like that? Has he slipped off on the foam? Or is he going to be like mine more or less? central with his pal there. So I'm going to attach mine kind of central there, either side of the, the centre cinch mark there. That's what I'm going to do. But use artistic licence and position your little mallows wherever you fancy them to sit. And try and get them to sit there like that. Again, digging down into to get a little bit of stuffing if I possibly can. So I've not overstuffed mine. I don't want it to be too bulgy. Mattress stitch all the way around. Try not to strangle the other mallow. All the way around like that. Check our position as we go now to make sure that we don't need to alter him too much. And he's looking okay, so I'm kind of happy with that. There's things, when you're stitching them on, I've got a tendency to, to shift sometimes from where you really want them to be. So double checking again now. Yeah, he's looking good. He's looking good. He's a happy little mallow. Stitch them all the way around and digging down into that stuffing gets a really good fixing and they don't wobble too much then, they're not loose. They are wobbly, don't get me wrong, they do move, but they're not unsecured. Totally unsecured. 
pop that around there. My mattress stitch is quite ad hoc on this, which is fine because there's no real stitches to follow as such. We're just securing it to the base of the drinky part. So I'm going to pop a knot in there now and bury my tail. Happy bunny with that one. In he goes. Out through there. And I will move on to doing the mouth. So grab a few pins and we're going to mark where we're going to pop our mouth. And there are our two mallows sitting on our cup, looking very, very happy indeed. Right, we're going to mark the mouth now. So I'm going to put a pin somewhere in the middle and where I want the bottom of the mouth to sit, which is roughly there. And I want the top of the smile to be roughly there. And then equidistant across roughly there. So I suggest you use pins because it does help. It helps a lot. All right. Now these are blue pins. Obviously, better colour would be I don't know, a red or a black. So you can reposition then to suit yourself where you want your mouth to be. So imagine our little V-shaped mouth there, and I'll grab my yarn now and we'll do the mouth. So I repositioned my right hand pin a little bit and I've got my black Aran yarn on a darning needle and I'm going to come in from the right hand side as I'm looking down and I'm going to come up at that left needle there. And here she comes hopefully. There you go, there it comes through there like that. Pull that through and leave a tail on the other end six inch tail something like that is fine we can now pull that one out and we're going to go down to the bottom one and insert through there like that and come up through that one on the right hand side as near as we can anyway that should be okay so we can take that one out we can also take that one out pull through our yarn and that's the first half of the smile done and then we'll go back into the bottom there like that and come out where we came in. Exactly the same place. That's important so we can hide the knot. And pull that smile through like that. Yay, he's a happy little cuppa. There you go. Now then, to finish off we just tie this off here like that. Tie it off with a double knot, not too tight because you don't want to distort that little smile at all. And then with one tail, we'll go in through that hole and pop out somewhere. We'll come in through the bottom. Oop, caught our little mallow there. And the same with the other tail, pop it on the darning needle. In through the same hole, out through the bottom somewhere. Trim that off, like that, job done. And then we can go to that entry point there and plump it back up and you wouldn't even know that knot was there. How awesome's that? So there's our little smile on our cup. Our little mallows are sitting on the top. It's a cold winter's day and this is going to be so tasty. Make sure when you're putting your mallows on that they're facing the right way. My mallows here are a little bit off, okay, because I didn't centre them with, with the centre of the eye, so I suggest you do that, which is something I forgot slightly about. So don't forget to centre your mallows, but you can twist them a little bit and put a few extra stitches in if you need to. So now all we need to do is to grab the saucer that we made earlier. Let's move these pins out of the way. So this is the saucer we made earlier, and it's just pop it on there like that. And there's our cup and our saucer. Now, you can hot glue it onto the bottom if you want to, because that's what you get there, cup and saucer, like that. Okay, or you can stitch it on, mattress stitch it um, around the base, which is probably what I will do now. I'm going to put the two centres together like that, like that, okay. And then I'm going to mattress stitch around the edge to secure it and to make sure that that saucer isn't going to come off. But it if you're going to be selling these at a craft fair or something, you can just pop it on the saucer like that. And of course, it's cute to pick it up and uh, make it look as if you're going to drink. 
drink your beverage. So you can leave it unattached or attach it, that's entirely up to you, but I'd call that with a little cup and saucer done. I hope you like this project. If you do, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Now I've written up a pattern for this which is available on my Etsy shop if you'd like to have a written version of the pattern which will detail everything you need to do without having to jot down notes as you watch the video. How cool is that? So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you very very soon with another pattern for you to enjoy. But if you prefer to give a donation to a local animal shelter in your area in lieu of the pattern price, that would be absolutely fabulous as well. And I would really, really appreciate it. It warms my heart when anybody does anything for charity, especially animal charities, of course, very close to my heart. Anyway, I wobbled on too much. I hope you like this pattern. I think he is really, really cute. I'll see you soon. Bye for now, guys. ta -ra for now. Oh, I'm looking into the Facebook group as well. So stay tuned. I'll let you know when I've set one up. Bye for now again.